Hi and hello all. Let us talk about Claisen condensation. In Claisen condensation, ester or ketone, which can be converted into an enolate, is reacting with an ester in presence of a base to produce a beta keto ester or beta diketone. Suppose this is a ketone. Let's say this is R group and this species is ketone. Then this part has to be R group and this is a beta diketone. Earlier, if it is ester both species are ester then this will be a beta keto ester so let's take the case of a ketone so a species which can be converted into an enolate reacts with an ester adds to an ester or dash leaves and we get a beta diketone so that's claisen condensation for a claisen condensation the addition has to be enolate addition has to be on the ester now let's talk about the base used in the Claisen condensation, usually sodium ethoxide or potassium, potassium ethoxide. In general, an alkoxide will be used as a base. Consider a free action of ethyl acetase, that is this species. Both uh, species, that is in red colored and blue colored, both are the same molecule or two molecules of the same ester. Then OET is the alcohol part of the ester. This part is known as the alcohol part. This part is known as the acid part of an ester. So this is the alcohol part and the alcohol part alcohol part comprises of an ethyl group. So the base comprises of the ethyl group that is sodium ethoxide is the base we use. Now let's have a look at the mechanism of this reaction. First few steps of this reaction is almost same as aldol condensation reaction. So base is being used to make this species an enolate and obviously these reactions are reversible. So let's show it like that. So let's show a hydrogen separately. This hydrogen is acidic. To a certain extent, the pKa of ester of this hydrogen is around 25, which is reasonably acidic that we can use a strong base and pick up the proton from here. So this base will pick up a proton from here. That means this O minus, the two electrons in this oxygen is going to stay in between this oxygen and this hydrogen. So the two electrons on this oxygen is going to make a new bond with this hydrogen. So a new bond is forming to this hydrogen, an old bond has to break this hydrogen carbon bond will break. So let's show that with a curved arrow. Let us say the two electrons in this bond will be shifted to carbon. In other words, the maximum probability of finding these electrons is going to be on carbon rather than in between hydrogen and carbon. This bond will no longer be there. Let us copy the whole thing down and try to make sense of the curved arrows. This uh, oxygen is going to make a new bond with this hydrogen. For the purpose of writing a reasonable mechanism, we can think that one electron of this bond belongs to this hydrogen. The other electron belongs to this carbon. Now both electrons are going to be on this carbon. That's what this curved arrow means. So as carbon is getting an extra electron, it will have a negative charge. So let's write that. I mean, there will be a negative charge here. And how about this oxygen? The oxygen had two electrons and this the two electrons of this oxygen is making this new bond now once it's in this bond one electron belongs to hydrogen one electron belongs to oxygen that means oxygen will lose one electron because both electrons were oxygen's electron but now one electron belongs to hydrogen that means oxygen lost one of its electrons so the negatively charged species will become neutral so this will become neutral and this carbon species will become negatively charged let's make the bond a little bit shorter RO minus will pick up is picking up a proton from the ester and this will become a negatively charged species while this becomes an alcohol. So let's not show the alcohol anymore. So let's concentrate on this negatively charged species. So this is a carbonion which can be stabilized by a carbonyl group next to it. So we can write a rational structure for this. The, we can think like these two electrons are going to be in between this carb these two carbon that is carbonyl carbon and this carbon and uh, that means going to there is going to be a new bond here that is a pi bond at the same time the old pi bond will break and both electrons will be on oxygen that is the pi this this pi bonds electrons are going to be on oxygen that means oxygen will get an extra electron and uh, so oxygen will have a negative charge so let's write that. So this species is known as enolate. Suppose we have a hydrogen on this uh, O minus, that is O minus is OH. Then this species is enol, that is a double bond species is en 
and OH is alcohol all, and enol is, you know, this functional group is known as enol. And a negatively charged species is enolate. So we made an enolate from ester. In Claisen condensation, this enolate will attack another ester molecule. So let's show that. Let us draw another molecule of the same ester. So let's say this enolate is attacking this ester. Let me flip this molecule. Uh, let me flip this structure so that it will be easier to represent the mechanism. The two electrons on this oxygen is going to be in between this oxygen and this carbon. That means a new bond is going to be going to form in between oxygen and carbon. This old bond will break. The pi electrons in this carbon will make a new bond with, between this carbon and this carbonyl carbon. Okay, so let's show that. This is new pi bond is forming between oxygen and carbon. The old pi bond will break and that two electron will be used for making a new bond with new bond with this carbon, this carbonyl carbon. Now a new bond is forming to this carbon, an old bond has to break, this pi bond will break, the oxygen carbon pi bond will break. Now let us copy down the whole thing and try to make sense of the curved arrows. So I copied down the whole thing. Now this arrow means there is going to be a new bond between this two, this oxygen and this carbon, sorry. The oxygen and this carbon and that means uh, there will no longer be a negative charge on this oxygen. Why? The two electrons in this oxygen is now here in this pi bond and one electron belongs to this carbon, one electron belongs to this oxygen in that pi bond. Both electrons belonged to oxygen, now only one electron belongs to oxygen. That means oxygen lost one of its electrons, so oxygen's negative charge will be lost and it will have a neutral, it will, it will be neutral. So let's change that. Let's uh, keep this negative charge somewhere here. I will be using it later. Now a new bond is forming here. An old bond from here will break. That means this pi bond is breaking at the same time this old new bond is forming. The two electrons in the pi bond is going to be in between this carbon and this carbon. That means a new bond is forming here. So this at this same time the old bond is breaking. This pi bond is breaking. That is shown by this curved arrow. So this pi bond is breaking. That OH is auto correction actually. There is no hydrogen here. Only a negative charge on this oxygen. Why the negative charge? The pi bond. Remember the pi bond at the same at the time the oxygen was neutral when there was a pi bond here. And uh, the two electrons in the pi bond, one electron in the pi bond belongs to oxygen, and one electron in the pi bond belongs to carbon. And both electron is now on oxygen or maximum probability of finding these two electrons is on oxygen now. That means oxygen got one extra electron, carbon's electron two. So oxygen got an extra electron, a neutral species is getting an extra electron. That means that will be a negatively charged species now. So that's how oxygen is negative now. Let us beautify this structure a little bit. At this stage, there is going to be a new bond between this oxygen and this carbon. That means, this two electrons in this bond is going to be in between this oxygen and this carbon. Let's show that with the curved arrow. As there is going to be a new bond here, an old bond has to break. So this OR will break. Break This OR will break away as OR minus. So let's copy the whole thing down and uh, try to make sense of the curved arrows. So the first curved arrow means there is going to be a new bond between this oxygen and this carbon. So there will be a new bond. At the same time this oxygen will lose its negative charge. That means this will become neutral. So now we have shown as five bonds to this carbon. That will never happen. As this bond forms, this, oh, this bond will break. So the alkoxide is getting regenerated here. Now we have our product, the beta keto ester. But when you look at the reaction, you can see all these steps are reversible. This product will not form in a good yield if everything is reversible. Look at the product. This is an active methylene group. That means a CH2 flanked by two carbonyl groups or two electron withdrawing group. In this case, one keto group and an ester group. And this species is very acidic. Like I said, the pKa of this ester is around 25. 
and uh, the decay of uh, alcohol that is this RO minus is picking up a proton and becoming ROH that is alcohol that has a pK of around 16 so the forward reaction is not happening that readily but consider the pK of this species so pK of species like this is somewhere around between 10 and 11 and also it is very acidic compared to alcohol and so a deproduction will happen from here this will act as an acid that will that it means this species will donate a proton to this or minus alkoxide the base so we can write a plus here to indicate that two products are formed and one of the product will react with the other product let's show that with the curved arrow so a new bond is forming to this hydrogen an old bond has to break let's copy down this thing and try to make sense of the curved arrows so this curved arrow means there is going to be a new bond between this this oxygen and this hydrogen so let's write that bond and at the same time this bond will break so let's remove that bond as this O as this O minus picked up a proton and this in this bond one electron one this is the new bond formed and the one electron belong and in this bond there are two electrons and one electron belong to hydrogen and one electron belong to oxygen both electron belong to oxygen when it was RO minus but now oxygen lost one of its electrons so oxygen will have a negative charge let's consider the broken bond here this carbon had a bond with hydrogen with this hydrogen but uh, in that bond there were two electrons and one electron belonged to hydrogen and one electron belonged to this carbon now both electron belongs to this carbon now both electrons belong to this carbon that means this carbon got an extra electron the electron of that hydrogen too so this species will have a negative charge and pk of this species is around 16 and pk of this species is around 10 10.5 that means the equilibrium is highly shifted towards the right hand side from here that means from this species to these species uh, it's not really a reversible reaction it's almost an irreversible reaction it's almost an irreversible reaction as the pka difference is very high in between these two species so even though all these reactions are reversible reactions the one irreversible step drives the whole reaction forward even though this is the final product, the reaction doesn't stop here. It will go on to form a carbanion, which is actually necessary for the successful completion of the reaction. Now we can add water or a dilute mineral acid. So presence of acid is indicated by H plus, and we will pro and this will and that will protonate this species. So we will regenerate our beta keto ester. So let's draw an H plus here, and we will show the carbon arrow here itself. So this will pick up a proton, this carbon will pick up a proton and this will become CH bond. So let's copy it. So there is going to be a new bond between these two. That means this is going, this is, this is the new bond. And at the same time, the plus charge will no longer be here. Why? The negative, the two electrons in this bond is making the, the two electrons in this carbon is making this new bond. Now, once in this bond, one electron belongs to this carbon, one electron belongs to this hydrogen. So this hydrogen got an extra electron so it will it will no longer have the positive charge and this carbon lost an extra electron that means this carbon will no longer be negatively charged species it will also be neutral so we can write it a hydrogen there or we can just remove it so this is our product this is our final product the beta keto ester so let's once again go over this uh, go over the mechanism of this reaction so ester or ketone or something which can be enolized or a species which can be converted into an enolate is getting converted into an enolate in the first step and in the next step the enolate attacks the ester and this species forms or minus is getting eliminated here and we will get a beta keto ester this ester is more acidic than the starting material so the proton will be picked up from this ester by this alkoxide ion and a carbonion will be formed and this is not a really this is not really a reversible reaction so this drives the whole reaction forward and now we can protonate the species to regenerate our beta keto ester so if this species is ethyl group let's say this so if the starting material is ethyl acetate the whole reaction will continue like this and we will form this species this is nothing but ethyl acetoacetate a well known active methylene compound. So Claisen condensation is almost like an aldol condensation. 
the main difference is that uh, the enolate is getting added to an ester and therefore the species formed is not an aldone it will be a beta diketone or a beta keto ester with that let us stop the video here hope you understood the mechanism of glycine condensation thank you